really something, I think, for some people to have the courage to come and explore hidden truth on a planet like this that has had human beings so deliberately made to forget so much. So we want to help wake that up. That's kind of why we're here. This first section, my name's Scott Lemriel, Ted Marr, Michiko Hayashi, Professor Pollock, M Emma, Louise, Michelle, Yanni. It's a whole group. We didn't know all, all these people were going to be for the introduction, but we are. And that's great. I don't know if you want to say a few words, Yanni? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, I am very pleased that we have come here together. And we are not many, but we are m the important, important ones who are... <laughs> Who, who will try to do an effort to for our planet and try to hit, try to explain in simple words what this is all about and and we had a w really good private meeting and we came to a, in my opinion to big realizations especially about water and I think we will the experts on this panels will will talk talk a little about about our breakthrough I would call it. Okay, thank you. <coughs> oh, well, <laughs> okay, uh, I'm uh, Jerry Pollack, and I'm from Seattle. I'm a professor at the University of Washington. And, uh, well, I'm, I'm happy to open. Uh, we, we're, water is, is the center of so many cultures, uh, uh, apart from being, being uh, highly problematic in, in, in today's world, which we all know about, uh, a great desire to, to clean up the water, or uh, clean up, uh, and, and uh, uh, the, the work that, that we've done is not directly related to cleaning up the water, but it's related to, to the chemistry and, and physics of water. However, the chemistry and physics of water are actually very closely tied to many aspects of water, aspects that are, you might say, um, central for many cultures, especially indigenous cultures. Uh, I was just in, in New Zealand, um, with, uh, and we met with a Maori a chief, and the chief was so uh, uh, overjoyed because they had just retrieved a source of water that had been sacred to their culture. And the government had taken it over, and the government kept it for 40 years. Yet, this was this was at, at the, the core, the heart, the soul of of their culture, and it was dreadful for them to to have have lost it. And finally, they got it back through uh, um, a, a, lot, a lot of <coughs> diligence, hard work, pressure. And so, I'm going to be talking later. Uh, about the research that we've done, we've done and what we've discovered, but I'll, I'll just summarize here because I think what we found is is something that that can actually connect to to the souls uh, of different uh, different cultures. We found that that water has a, a, a different phase that. I'm sure you all don't know, maybe some do, uh, and know about it. We, we grow up learning that water has three phases, the solid, liquid, and vapor. But we found that, that there's actually a fourth phase, and it's all, all, it, it's all around us. It's not just a trivial amount. It's a phase of water that's in between a liquid and a solid. And it grows next to certain uh, surfaces. And your body is full of it. So we, we all know that we're two-thirds water. However, um, we're two-thirds of this fourth phase of water. And, and, and this phase of water has uh, many interesting properties that I'll tell you about. And, and because your cells are full of this water, you have those properties as, as well. And just, just one of them is, well, two of them are energy. Uh, it kind of a, is a surprise that water can t contain energy, this fourth phase of water has charge, and because <coughs> by virtue of the charge it contains energy. Also, this phase is, is um, semi-solid, it's, it's kind of like a gel, and because it has that consistency, uh, all, all of the molecules are connected, it, just like any um, uh, crystal or solid. And as a consequence of that, as I'll explain in my lecture, it has the capacity to carry information. 
And some of you may be aware that that water has the capacity to store information and even transfer information. This is a controversial issue. However, I think we've been able to discover the underlying basis uh, of it and, and how, how there can be a communication uh, from one water to another water, from you, your water, to another water, and a subtle means of com communication that can exist as a result of this kind of structure. So. I, I don't want to give everything away. I just wanted to say welcome and uh, to tell you that there's a lot that's going on about water right now. It's not just simply H2O. There's a lot more to it. And I hope to be able to present that to you later. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're going to start off and just kind of take turns, I guess, in sharing with all of you the highlights of and the importance of what took place the last couple of days. When Yanni started this conference, it was originally about just a private meeting and he wanted to open up the public, and, and um, which is good because we had the opportunity, I think, for the first time as people who know about their area, whether it's about extraterrestrials or healing or holistic stuff, scientific approach to things which is bridging metaphysics and spirituality with the scientific community, which is a real important movement, I think, ramping up on the planet today. And a lot of areas like this, and we got to hobnob together for a couple of days, get to know each other, and share a great deal of our experiential-based knowledge, and come to a focus for the public, and share some of the highlights of what that was about, so you can be get some insights and, and some benefit from what that was about. That's really the function of this conference. And this stuff is all being videotaped, the private sessions and the public, and then we'll get them out on YouTube and they'll be free and we'll be able to get some of this stuff out into the world and start some new things going towards transforming this planet. That's the basis of it. You wanna, who wants to start off with uh, maybe some highlights about, some? you could start off with water, certainly. <laughs> there were a number of people Thank you, Scott. that came up, up to the conference that were from disciplines of water, from shamans from Siberia. The Hopi elders in the United States are here, and they'll be talking about their sacred view of water that they've known for thousands of years and how important it is to the survival of the planet that we respect it. Take it away. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Michiko Hayashi from, uh, from Tokyo, from the office of Emoto Peace Project. Um, I got here on Wednesday uh, with, um, with Ted, and ever since then I've been here with everyone from, uh, all of us got together from around the world. And beside me is um, uh, Mr. Tetsu Shiratori, who is a, a very well-known uh, film director and producer from Japan also, and her, his uh, translator, Tomoko. And um, we've been, this past two days, we have been discussing from different aspects of, from science, from spiritual spirituality, from um, uh, Native uh, Indian, Native American um, culture, the, uh, point of view and, and different point of views and what I was um, what I thought through these past two days was that um, so many times people started to talk about water just as uh, Dr. Pollack um, said and of course he's the, the world leading scientist um, of water and we invited him just last month to give a conference or a lecture on the, his fourth phase of water because it is, as you will learn today, um, it is possible that water, we can prove that water has the memory in the fourth phase of water. And Dr. Emoto, um, I worked as Dr. Emoto as personal assistant for more than 10 years until he passed away um, in 2014 and until then I was working as an assistant but now 
I took over his um, peace project, Emoto Peace Project. And now I am talking about his discovery, which is the message from water. And through uh, taking water crystals from water after showing different words and uh, after offering prayers, after listening, water listening to different kinds of music and all seeing different things, yeah, Dr. Emoto discovered that water has memory and as the primary principle um, water is, if we learn about the truth of water or without studying or knowing truth of water, we really don't know the truth of this whole earth or what it is, what the life is, what the what peace is, what we can do to make the whole whole this earth the peaceful place. But the simple thing is, what if we learn about water? It's so simple because it shows us what love and gratitude is te telling us. And if we learn, if we practice love and gratitude in our daily life, as we use, um, as we drink water, as we wash our hands, as we everything, everybody, the whole earth, whole universe will be the peaceful place. And that's um, what I am trying to um, tell through my lectures in different places, of course in Japan, to many children and educators and parents. And um, I was very happy that in this past day, two days, so many times, water was the important issue. And I hope you will learn about that today and tomorrow. How about that? Thanks, <laughs> thank you. That's Thank great. you. <laughs> would you like to go, Ted? Yes, yes I would. Good morning, um, or good evening, or good afternoon, uh, if you're watching this on the internet eventually, <laughs> whatever time it is there. My name is Ted Marr, I'm, I'm radio talk show host and a psychic from Seattle area. Uh, my show is called Out of This World Radio, and um, I just want to thank everyone for this wonderful uh, conference and for coming here today, and I especially want to thank my dear friend Yanni for organizing this. Uh, this is an attempt, I think, on his part and all of our parts to turn this planet around and make it a much better place. And we're planting the seeds today to, to do that. Um, I want to tell you from my own experience as a psychic that I think we're, we're rapidly going into the fifth dimension, uh, which, is, which is a much higher dimension than the one we're currently in. There's actually 12 different dimensions, I've been told, with the 12th dimension being the, the place where the supreme being is, or the creator, or the entity that created all of, all of this. And um, as we go from the third into the fifth dimension, you have to remember that what takes place in the fifth dimension will take precedence over this third dimension physical reality. Uh, during the last couple of days, we discussed how there, uh, there is a, a new planet, a new Earth that has already been created um, that we're going to be stepping into here very, very shortly. Um, and it's going to be a new positive planet based on love, love and harmony, love and gratitude, which is the work of Dr. Moto and my wonderful friend here, Michiko Hayashi. The other thing I wanted to tell you, too, is that um, the, the basic nature of humans is, is to be benevolent. And that's why... Um, um, uh, President, I've been in touch with President Kennedy the last couple of years on the other side, and, and he said that the same forces, we, we are destined, he said that we are destined to become a benevolent, loving planet. And uh, before he was assassinated on November 22nd, 1963, that's what the, the path of the planet was going to be, a benevolent, loving planet. Of course, that got hijacked by some, some darker negative elements, but they're now like rats scattering in a basement. Um, their days are numbered, and uh, the tide has turned, and we no longer have a future where we're going to face a World War III or Armageddon. Sure, there are problems here. I'm not denying that there aren't problems, but those problems will be, uh, will be uh, overcome and we will create the kind of planet we're supposed to have because our basic nature is to be benevolent and loving and kind. That's why the water crystal research that Dr. Moto did for so many years showed that the most beautiful crystals that you could possibly produce were produced when 
our thoughts, our human thoughts, and that would I contend from the fifth and higher dimensions, were focused in on, on like a, a glass of water, and they would produce these beautiful patterns. That's the kind of world we can, we can create. And one of the most important things, of course, that uh, Dr. Moto found is that um, we, our human bodies are 70% water, just like the Earth. So you may not believe this, but in the higher dimensional states of the fifth dimension and higher, your thoughts are things. They have a physicality just as real as, as this cell phone or this desk. So you have to be careful of what your thoughts are because they do create. And I've been told over and over again um, by more advanced beings that um, we are co-creators with the supreme being in creating a much more beautiful planet. I had on my radio show about two months ago the third highest priestess of Telos underneath Mount Shasta. Telos is a Lemurian civilization it's been there for about 12,000 years and they escaped there um, to the inner earth when there was a cataclysmic series of events that eventually destroyed Atlantis um, but they said that they, we are slated for uh, for for um, for, for much, much higher dimensions now. Um, as part of that, when you go into the higher dimensions, um, the, uh, the truth is, is a fundamental part of that. And the truth that we're finding out now is that um, we are benevolent creatures and we're slated for a much, much more uh, a brighter future. Um, one of the keynote things about the fifth dimension is that things that are false will fall by the wayside. And that includes governments, personal relationships, careers, all kinds of things. But on the other hand, things that are true become even more truer and self-evident as this decade goes on. The kinds of things that I do now as a psychic, including reading minds, looking into the future, and doing remote viewing, will become quite commonplace according to the, in, into the 2020s and 2030s, according to Nostradamus, who I've also been in contact with. And um, for the future, um, this is we are sowing the seeds today for a beautiful, bright planet. And I want to thank you all so much for being here and coming along for the ride. Would you like to say something, Emma? <clears throat> yes, I can say a little bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My microphone. From the well, last couple of days that you're experiencing. Yes. Hello and welcome, everyone. I'm Emma Louise from Norway. And I'm also here because I am apparently a contactee, as American call it. <laughs> I never called myself a contactee, but it's not a secret that I have memories from an earlier life in another galaxy called the Andromeda. And I also have uh, memories from other lifetimes here on Earth and other planets as well. I was thinking about, uh, before I lay to bed yesterday, what uh, my main focus would be here to this weekend to share with you. And I think that my main focus will be faith and hope and especially faith and hope in ourself. Because I know that the things that I'm talking about is not to be seen for everyone, but it is my experiences and it is from the heart that I'm sharing them. And I want to tell you that we have so much good in coming. And actually this new earth that is created is not a, like a physical earth, um, beside this earth we are living on now, but there is a new earth that we are going to enter. But before we are entering this earth, we have to learn to forgive. And the forgiveness that we need to learn is in a very deep level. We have to forgive ourselves and forgive each other. And uh, you know, we have all been co-creators of this world that we are living in today. So I think it's time that we stop pointing fingers at each other and blame each other for the things that have happened in this planet and start to really go into the depth of each other's heart and our own heart. And when we forgive each other, we will feel gratefulness, we will feel gratitude. And I've also talked a lot about water these uh, days. And when we feel gratitude, we have these beautiful crystals, this beautiful energy coming up in us and coming up in everything around us uh, since everything almost about uh, around us and inside of us is water 
And when we get this high energy, we will be feeling love and we'll be feeling unconditional love. And we will understand that we are all in oneness with each other. And in this oneness, we are also individuals. And as individuals, we are going to take responsibility for our actions. And in the oneness, we are never going to hurt each other because we know that if we hurt each other, we are hurting ourselves. So this is what I'm going to share with you this weekend and also a little peek into this new world because I have been there and it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Want to say something? <coughs> Michelle's going to have something to say now. Just introduce yourself a little bit. Hello, everyone. I'm Michelle Walling. I'm a radio show host, and I'm also a webmaster, and I work with uh, another website uh, that is worldly uh, recognized. It's n5d.com. Of course, in the fifth dimension is what it stands for. And um, I'm here. Um, at first, I didn't understand uh, why, but I uh, consulted with my inner voice, and I said, uh, you know what? What is this uh, conference about? You know why? Why me? Why was I chosen? And you know, is it safe for me to travel from the United States uh, to Finland all by myself? And of course, I got a resounding yes. I had no idea that uh, what we would have in common, and I had no idea about. Um, Water, although I had, um, I have shared the properties of uh, Dr. Emoto's work with many people on N5D, uh, and it's in the top 25,000 websites in the world. So many people have read about his work, and so um, as I got here um, and we began, to, I began to meet everyone. I realized that I was uh, meeting with uh, my star family. Um, I am a cosmic star seeds expert, and um, I know that I'm from the stars. But not only that, but um, I realized that I had um, some soul family here, which is, you know, a lot different than just your star family. It's, it's part of your soul. And so uh, I found myself here. And in the last couple of days, um, we have eaten together. <laughs> we have spent 12 to 14 hours, uh, maybe more for some of them last night, together. And it has just been amazing because I realized, you know, sometimes when you when you do something, I've seen this over the last five years of my awakening, you don't understand why you're doing it until you look back. And I've looked back over the last two days to realize that Yane has provided a, a fine example of how to create community. And um, I feel like that we've all been watched here and we've been, uh, um, our actions have been studied, and uh, we are to become uh, galactic ambassadors uh, in the cosmos, and we have to graduate from here first. And I think everyone here has done a fine job of explaining themselves and uh, giving respect to other human beings and allowing them to, um, to, to speak their mind and working out any kind of misunderstandings because the biggest problem we have is the English language, the Finnish language, the Russian language, all these different languages. We all drive on wrong sides of the roads and do different cultures and, you know, it's the same thing out in the stars. So we have to um, understand this and work with each other. Um, so I think we all passed the test as far as proving that humanity can uh, definitely be on galactic councils. Um, I just want to say that another thing I realized is uh, because of the properties of water and uh, when you have uh, people that are sitting uh, holding this space for other people to speak, I noticed um, water can communicate with each other, right? So. I'm communicating with you on a on on one level, uh, and you're communicating with me just by being in uh, next to each other, or in the same room with each other, or even in the same city, state, country, or planet. But in particular, yesterday when uh, I was uh, uh, asking questions, we did a we did question and answer just to get the ball rolling to speak to each other. I would write a question down, and um, it would. Then I would write a second question down. I would ask the first question, and then the person speaking would start answering the second question. So we are all psychic because 
water can communicate with each other. And then as I was sitting here, I looked back at Yane's creation of his dream here to bring people together. And what's the main thing you see in this picture is water. Right. So uh, I want to, I just want to say, um, I'll be speaking uh, tomorrow evening, uh, close to the end, second to the last. And I'll be tying together my uh, starseed uh, interpretation of what uh, everybody's talking about in the next two days and trying to summarize it in a way uh, of a big picture uh, all the way back to creator source as well as how it uh, funnels down from your star uh, history and origin down to where you are right now in this body, who, who we are, why we are here, and what we can do for humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. I should give you all a little bit of an update about what happened the last couple of days. We have a Siberian shaman here who is well known uh, in Siberia uh, and did some spectacular things for all of us in sharing his wisdom. And the interesting thing during his introductory talk, he came out with their sacred view of water and how they work with it as a communication device to the Supreme, to the higher heavens, and what they do with it. They know this stuff. The Hopi people and Hopi elders have always treated water with a sacred view in the same manner these people know its value. So our job is in part to, to, uh, to correct a problem in the planet, it's to get people aware of, we're made up mostly of water. So um, we, we have the Hopi elders who, who came here to share with us, the scientists who came here to share with us about their awakening in this world on a scientific level, looking deeper than conventional science. Um, my particular thing, my name is Scott Lemriel, and I've been in contact with, well, what was called a galactic alliance out there, it's not a federation, it's much larger than that, of benevolent beings, many of them human, uh, the majority of them are space-faring races, uh, they have been, there's millions and millions, billions of them that people on Earth have been kept completely in the dark from knowing about, and most people here know that. They have had a great concern about what to do with this planet and when to do it. One of the things that I share with people has to do with their involvement, not just with this planet, but with many worlds out there where some tyrant races have gotten control of them over a long galactic period of history and how that's coming to a permanent end. If you can't solve the problem off planet here, it'll always just keep coming back to this one. So that's one of the things I'll be sharing. And how that it, it concerns them, and uh, particularly the manner in which they're gonna go about this in helping us solve these problems here. So you're gonna have a, a wonderful time hearing from each of these speakers over the next two days. And it's, it's nice because this is such a, it's a small group of what we call the public, but really we're all the same, you know, we're all the public. So it's gonna be great fun for you guys. I really welcome you here. Um, I guess we could go a little, anybody want to say anything else? Is there, is there anybody wanted... out there too from yesterday, from the last two days that wants to come down? We can just switch out. Well, we have a few people. Real, go ahead. Very, very, very quickly. Um, the future is not written in stone. Things are changeable according to our free will and what we want to do. And I wanted to tell you that uh, we were headed for a third world war in Armageddon up until um, roughly March of 2011. I'm sure you know what happened then, that was Fukushima. And that was not a natural event. That wasn't an earthquake that, was, uh, that, that happened off the coast of Japan. It actually was a nuclear device placed there by some dark elements who wanted to create a tsunami which hit those nuclear reactors. Shortly before those react, the, the, um, the tsunami hit those reactors, an Israeli company had had the safety contract for the reactors and they inconceivably, and inconceivably they shut down the safety systems an hour before the tsunami hit to make sure that when the water hit, they would, the, the reactors would completely be covered in, in water and there would be a nuclear explosion destroying Japan and much of the world with radiation. 
that did happen. There, were four, there was four times more radiation at Fukushima than there was in Chernobyl. In Chernobyl, millions of people died that you wouldn't ever hear about in the major media outlets in this world. But it, it also happened in Japan. It was far worse. But it was an attempt by some dark elements on this planet to eliminate up to 95% of the world's population. It did not succeed. The Galactic Alliance has stepped in to clean it up. And at that point, the, uh, our timelines changed. And it t changed in a good sense. Um, and, could be, and we are getting help off planet from, from very spirit, very powerful um, uh, civilizations called the Galactic Alliance. And um, so now that's, but this is a little bit of background about talking about our bright future in that um, cleaning up a nuclear accident is very old technology, but we need help on this planet. But because we're co-creators with the, with the supreme being and creating a bright, beautiful future for ourselves, they haven't cleaned up the radiation completely because then they say that we wouldn't learn our lesson. And um, if they clean it up completely, we're liable to go back, construct more nuclear power plants and have yet another accident in which they'd have to come clean up our mess, like little kids playing in a sandbox. We have to learn from our mistakes. Um, and I wanted to tell you that uh, uh, off planet, this, the, the, the nuclear energy uh, outside of the planet Earth is completely illegal. And does anyone here know how we, got, we truly got nuclear energy? We, it was given to us by a totalitarian race called the reptilians who wanted us ultimately to destroy ourselves. But that's not going to happen. There are two main, uh, main uh, ET groups. I'll be going into this uh, later this weekend, but there are two main ET groups who visit planet Earth. Uh, one's benevolent, one's negative. One is service to self, and the other is service to others. One's based on love and harmony, the other one's based upon war and hate. The, unfortunately, the United States government has been influenced and some say controlled by a very uh, negative group of, 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 of aliens called the reptilians since 1954. And in that year, President Eisenhower signed an agreement with uh, these group of negative entities that in exchange for some of their antiquated technology that they would be allowed to quote study us and abduct us and do all kinds of horrible experiments upon us and create a hybrid species with us in an, in a, in an attempt to take over the planet. But those, 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 those plans are now being stopped because uh, we, are meant, we are slated to become a, a, a beautiful benevolent planet. There's a second group of entities called the Galactic Alliance, which are comprised of 450 million planets, approximately 7 trillion entities, many of whom are human, not all, but they're all benevolent, and they're all based on service to others, not service to self. And they've stepped in, and they're helping us now behind the scenes. I want to tell you all that you may want to look up in the sky during the day and the night while you're here, because you may see three Galactic Alliance ships on top of us. They are there in a slightly uh, higher dimension, so you can't see them. They do show themselves uh, occasionally, uh, especially at night. Uh, last night, I mean, Mr. Uh, the, my friend here, Scott, will be talking more about that in his talk. But last night, um, we did, after this shamanic drum session by this wonderful um, uh, the, the shamanic man from, from Russia, uh, my friend Michiko Hayashi was taking pictures of the clouds, and she noticed one of the clouds had a beautiful rainbow color. That often is a cover for a UFO. They disguise themselves as clouds, or they, they cover themselves with clouds. So that's what we saw um, last night. Um, and, and actually, I'll tell you this. Our friend Ambassador Trillian, who is an ambassador from the Ceres agenda, which is part of the Galactic Alliance, is actually here. He's standing behind me here in the um, seventh, sixth, seventh dimension. He's 19 feet tall. The gentleman is 10,000 years old. But the amazing thing is he doesn't look a day over 30. And, and the, the lesson there, the, the Ceres themselves can live up to 25,000 years if they choose. Could you imagine living, living, Scott will be talking about that, but could you imagine living that long? <laughs> On a normal human planet, guess how long you live? Anyone like to guess outside of this one? A thousand years. That's the typical range. Among the Pleiades, where I come from originally, it's, it's about a thousand years. Where um, among the Andromedans, where um, Emma Louise comes from, the, the average longevity is about 3,000 years. So we're babies in the universe. 
And uh, long ago, our facilities were shut down. Our longevities were shut down. In the Bible, if you look in the Bible, even in the Bible, they talk about people living hundred, hundreds of years. And one of the things I want to tell you, that um, as, as you spiritually advance, the aging process will start, will stop, and then actually reverse. Um, and you'll become much long, young, younger looking. A Pleiadian woman, for example, who's human, looks like us, um, who's 300 years old, looks like somebody who's roughly 30 years old. Yeah. And so, uh, forget the beauty creams, the facelifts, the plastic surgery, just become more spiritual and you can literally reverse the clock. I, I have, I, have uh, I know uh, of friends at home in their um, late 60s and 70s who uh, are very spiritually advanced and they look half their age. They really do. And then you wonder how people can live so long and they live long, healthy and beautiful lives. Now given a choice, since we're all co-creators with the Supreme Being, given a choice, wouldn't you rather choose a life that's full of joy and happiness and love and, and look youthful for your entire life and live a long, happy life than one filled with misery and hate and conflict. And this is one of the most important lessons, of course, from Michiko Hayashi's uh, work with Dr. Emoto. And I think we all have the same mes message here that we want a bright, beautiful planet for the future. That's why we're all here today. <laughs> so I, with that, I just want to thank you so much for, for coming here. And uh, everyone has something to say, so I'm going to be quiet now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Last night we had a beautiful shamanic ceremony by the lake and it was a, a healing um, healing process whether we felt it or not. I know that everyone uh, at that vicinity, at that uh, lake and, and all the partiers across the lake as well <coughs> received some wonderful healing energies and um, this raises your vibrational frequency of your body and uh, when you hear things like uh, reptilians, um, beings who want to take over planet Earth, uh, I encourage you to allow that to come in and, um, you know, experience what it feels like in your heart center and to, to let it go and to know and trust and have blind faith uh, if you don't have any knowledge of what's happening that... Um, you are working on another level to um, alleviate uh, what's happening here on earth and just by being here you're a part of that whether you realize it or not and the Hopi uh, share with us that uh, we are the ones that we've been waiting for and uh, we are uh, we we need to uh, keep our vibration high and stay in a very positive mode through this, uh, the rest of this journey in the next two days. As we work through the past and we talk about the future and we stay in the present moment. And when we're in the present moment, that's when we're creating the future, the best, in a very high, positive, vibrational way. And with that, I would just like to ask uh, if you would please lead us in a Ho'opono prayer as we oh. begin the rest of this, uh, um, because the Ho'opono is the highest vibrational frequency of emotion and words that, uh, that we can uh, repeat. Uh, and this is something you can do every day okay. in the shower if you want, or the bath with the water being the carrier back to your water. Uh, so if you thank your water in your shower, it will resonate the vibration of your water in your body and give you a clearing and high vibration. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Michelle. I'm happy to do that. Um, before going into Hope and Abono, I um, was just thinking right now, talking about a world, the, making this whole world a peaceful place and um, about being healthy and happy. Um, what I was just thinking was that knowing what's happening in our own body, um, we know that 10% within our body is a good bacteria, and 10% 10, 10 is bad bacteria, and 80% that's in between good and bad. So if we have just a little bit over 10% of good bacteria, then this 80% will come to good bacteria. So our body is the smallest universe. And then we'll go to 
probably if uh, my body or that means my health, I mean the good health, a happy health, then my family will be the same in a good, happy family. And then it will be expanding to society. And the society is in a good condition or a healthy, happy condition in harmony. Then our country will be in a good, harmonious country, being very happy. If the country is happy, it'll expand to the earth. If the earth is happy and harmonious place, the whole universe will be because it's just the difference of the size. So I would like to start from our own, your own body, your own health, being always um, grateful and loving yourself first and loving everything else, everybody else. Then we will be in harmony all the time. And then as we are water, this earth is water, we're surrounded by water. This earth is the um, planet of water. So let's send love and gratitude using this Ho'oponopono um, every day. And I'd like, I'm honored to start this whole um, conference with um, Ho'oponopono, okay? So please repeat after me, all right? Three times, we'll go three times. Water, we're sorry. Water, Water we're, we're sorry. sorry. Water, please forgive us. Water, Water please, please forgive, forgive us. us. Water, we thank you. Water, Water we thank you. Water, we love you. Water, Water we love, love you. you. Water, we're sorry. Water, Water, we're sorry. Water, please forgive us. Water, Water please, please forgive, forgive us. us. Water, we thank you. Water, Water we, we thank you. Water, we love you. Water, we love you. Water, we're sorry. Water, Water we're sorry. Water, please forgive us. Water, Water please, please forgive us. us. Water, we thank you. Water, Water we, we thank you. you. Water, we love you. Water, Water, we love you. Thank you. Thank you. And water within us, water in this vapor, in this air, water beyond this area is in love and gratitude and healthy, happy mode. Thank, Thank you very you much. Girl. Thank you, Mitchie. Thank you. I want to say one more thing and we'll wrap up this introduction part of it. We're going to be endeavoring to share with you some special things, techniques I will during my presentation that will help others make a safe connection to higher faculty of knowing direct perception, highest faculty that we have that's been shut down. So to begin that process for you, and if you exercise it and work with it, the same things that I share in my books, the Seiri's Agenda, the Emerald Doorway of these things, will become your experiences in your own way. So that's something important that you can leave this conference with. Thank you. Um, Yanni, what's the next thing coming up? I want to announce it. Yes. Or you can. It's hoping. Oh. Yes, uh, I was greatly, I felt the love when we did this Hope on Apollo. I mean, it's, it was truly powerful. I hope everybody else also felt, felt it. So, but um, we should begin our, our speeches and uh, next, next one, or the first one to begin would be Mr. Werner Masayesva and his wife, Becky Masayesva, okay. are sitting right there, so. Does it start now? Yes, we will start now. It's you guys would like to come up and share your wisdom from the Hopi? I thought we had a little bit of a break. Don't we have a bit of a break, Yanni? Fifteen minutes break, Yanni. And then ten. Yeah. 10 yeah. Okay. We can do that too. Yeah, break, we right? can have a fifteen minutes break. Yeah. yeah. Fifteen minute break, and then we'll start. Just for preparations. So. 